Welcome back to Bash Bros and episode 23 of Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. So you were here last week so there isn't really much to catch up on um, but we are back this week because we have the big title reveal and contract signing for the Notorious Pro Wrestling Women's Final. So let's actually take a wee look at the brackets and how we actually got to this point. So our two finalists are Viper and Kaylee Ray, the two Scottish women who are destined to do this forever. Both actually had quite tough battles going into the finals, so Viper started off by facing Nicole Matthews in the round of 16. She then went on to beat Tessa Blanchard, which is probably her toughest victory so far in the quarterfinals, and then in the semi she was able to beat Killer Kelly, who uh, has been disappointing in terms of performance wise this entire tournament. Kelly Ray on the other hand, so she beat Amy Alonzi in the round of 16. Going into the quarterfinals then she faced Zia Brookside who had been uh, previously injured in a post-match attack by Alpha Female so that was an easy win for Kelly Ray and then in the semis she went on to face Michael Satamora in an okay match. Michael was off her game which lowered the overall rating a wee bit. Um, but yeah, so the contract signing for the final is tonight and they will face each other at the pay-per-view. Looking at the world news then and maybe we a bit closer to home in our own wee company. Um, a lot of contracts had gone up for renewal or were able to be renewed last week. Uh, so the likes of uh, Cyborg Wolves came up, Kenny Williams came up, uh, Tom Phillips came up. So they have all re-signed. The only person I did not re-sign, as I said last time, is... Timmy Force from that last wee batch of people. The reason being, I already kind of have a face jobber with Dean Allmark, and I don't see Timmy. I don't see Timmy as good as Dean. Uh, although he is younger, he just, in terms of stats, is not as good as Dean Allmark. Then, in terms of world news, I think the biggest thing that I noticed when I was looking through this is that New Japan have lost a big or two big names. So Tamatonga has left New Japan and Kenta has left New Japan. However, they are both still signed with New Japan of America. So if you remember months ago, um, New Japan almost seemed like they had split from, back when New Japan was pissing everyone off, NXT UK, AEW, WWE. Before that, New Japan had a bit of a, almost like a split from New Japan of America. So they ended trade agreements. They stopped having friendly attitudes towards each other and they stopped accepting developmental workers. So it almost seems like the only relationship that those two companies now still have with each other is that they are both in the... Oh, what's it called? The IWGP conception, which is New Japan, New Japan of America, and CMLL. So, I have put it out on Reddit, and I will put it to you guys. Um, what do you think I should do? I'm actually quite tempted, just for a bit of flavor in our kind of wrestling world, that we rename and rebrand New Japan of America. Um, I know it's a really small thing, we won't see that much of it, but they are pretty much two very separate companies at this point, to the point where they're not even sharing workers. So I am quite tempted to rebrand New Japan of America, and call it something else. But yes, so suggestions in the comments or on Reddit or wherever. What do you think the new or the rebranded New Japan of America should be? Or do you think we should just leave it? Should we just leave it New Japan of America? And with everything covered, let's get into it and book the show. And we are back coming at you from the Sunflower House in Belfast. It is Thursday Night Wanted. Um. It's not a particularly stacked card, well, so I don't think it's a particularly stacked card, but I, two things I do kind of love about it is that we have two tag matches on it, and if you think back to like, I don't know, even three months ago, to see how far our tag division has come is kind of mental, and how strong it is, so I think like, yeah, once we wrap up the women's tournament, we'll probably more or less launch right into a tag team tournament for the tag team titles. But yeah, other than that, let's launch into this. So in a backstage segment then, uh, Amir Jordan agrees to join the Grado Talent Agency. And he has an idea for a tag team partner. So that will be revealed at the pay-per-view. 
Uh, Amir Jordan is a good fit, I think, for the the Greater Talent Agency. I think that they also says it's slightly more of a comedic babyface stable, and Amir Jordan fits into that. Um, so yeah, I think that'll go well. And it's a 44 segment overall. In a backstage promo, then Sonico has accepted the Master's ways and has joined forces with Pentagon Junior. Uh, to strike at the heart of NPW. Again, more cryptic mumbo jumbo messages. The reason I did this was because um, we didn't get a chance to turn Sonico during the post match beat or the post match segment last week. Um, so we are going to turn him heel now. 49 segment though, which is also very good. Just to point that out before we do the turn. So we are going to turn him babyface. He's like it's been built up for seven segments. I can't see this being poor. Yeah, complete success. There we go. Going on into our next match then, uh, in a superb match, Rich Swan and Jody Fleish defeated the Filthy Generation in 13-13, when Jody Fleish pinned Lewis Gervin. Aspen Faith got a 45, Lewis Gervin got a 49, which is very good from him, Jody Fleish got a 47, and Rich Swan got a 59, which is, I mean, that's approaching Chris Hero levels of good there, <laughs> um, so that's really, really good, and overall 48, that is... That's nearly a main event caliber match, which is, considering I would consider three of the four guys in this mid-card guys, that's really good. Really, really happy with that. Um, so this will then obviously, this is the kind of the established Jody Fleish and Rich Swan as a tag team. Uh, I thought of a name of them and it's st stupid, but I will fight, I will die on this hill and it will be revealed uh, at the pay-per-view what their tag team name is. But again, this is just... This is, they are not a unit, you know, they are individual tag teams, so they're more of an alliance who will ta tag up every once in a while. Uh, I think Rich Swan is far too good to be in a tag team. Uh, he should be a main eventer. And then the contract signing and t uh, title reveal for the women's championship. I mean, it's a contract signing angle, you know what it is. There's a desk in the middle, there's someone overseeing it, which is Conor McGregor, and then there, there's the competitors on either side, and one of them's going to go through the table. But 87, very good. Conor McGregor probably carried this, I would bet, but... Yeah, very good. So in a match that was announced last week, Grizzly Young Fets drew with the Mighty Don't Kneel after the Kings of the North interfered and attacked both teams. So it was ruled a no contest. This is just to create more tension between the Kings of the North and the Grizzly Young Vets until they fight. Also, it kind of gives the Mighty Don't Kneel something to do. We have had them for a while. They've only, re only really had one match with us. They will be a big part of the tournament going forward. But I also don't want to give away a finish between these two teams because I think there's a good chance these could be finalist teams in the tournament as well. That's why I've kind of had Kings of the North interfere and ruin the match because I don't want to don't want to give away who would win between these two teams just yet. Uh, so Zach Gibson got a 51, James Drake got a 48, Shane Haste, uh, I keep going to call him Shane Thorne as NXT name, uh, so I do, but so Shane Haste got a 47 and Mikey Nichols got a 47. Uh, James Drake still had that eye injury which slowed him down, um, but both teams got tag team specials, so 45 I'm happy enough with. In our main event then again, which was announced last week, Eason Reese is the latest person Conor McGregor has sent to try and take the title off of Chris Hero. So in an exceptional match, Chris Hero defeated Eason Reese in 2003 with a submission, the Hangman's Clutch. This is defense number 5 for Chris Hero. 53 match, really good. Eason Reese a 45, which... Uh, it's okay, I would expect, to, again, my, like my main eventers to be maybe pushing 50. Uh, Chris Hero got a 60, which is just Chris Hero doing Chris Hero things. After the match then, uh, Conor McGregor comes in, gets in Chris Hero's face, and he's just like, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of sending boys to do a man's job. I'm sending, sending stuntmen to do a real fighter's job. And he's like, I am going to take this belt from you at the pay-per-view. And this is the Chris Hero turn, which is like, hold, hold on a second. These guys are more than just stuntmen. These are professional wrestlers. These guys put their their bodies on the line every night. I, say, like, I don't like a lot of the guys back there, but I respect them for coming out and doing this. And then this is kind of the turn for Chris Hero. Uh, 84, which I'm not surprised by. These are two of my best talkers. Um, and then I'm going to see... No, I, I, have a, I have a fear for this Chris Hero thing. I forgot to have him set the turn for this entire month. So this is going to be a... A shock turn or a, I can't remember what they call it in this but pretty much a shock turn or surprise turn which it's fine if you do it once in a long time but repetitive use can kind of make it less effective now I don't think I've done a shock turn in a while if ever on the save so we should be okay oh here we go please don't fuck up oh it was a good success okay that's all right so the main event will hopefully be completely intact to the pay-per-view 
Um, and that's the show. Uh, 59, which is good. Um, nothing really let us down. It was a solid show all round. So I'm very happy with 59. So the news coming out of Wanted is actually, this is kind of a big one. So New Japan have disbanded the Bullet Club, which is kind of mental, I think. But I suppose with Kenta leaving, that's a big loss for Bullet Club. So I'm kind of curious. So like, what stables do they have going currently? Chaos, uh, Los Angeles, Suzuki Gun, and then United Empire. That's mental. That's actually kind of like, imagine if Bullet Club stopped being a faction in New Japan. That's a crazy thought. Oh, weird. Um, so with Tama Tonga leaving as well, that's another big hit for Bullet Club because they've all gone the, the American one now. And then another article I actually e- emailed through. So Powerhouse Hobbs actually did leave AEW. Um, I shortlisted him. I'm still torn about whether or not to bring him in. If I did, what I might do is bring him in as like a bodyguard for maybe the likes of Ace Austin. So uh, Ace Austin has been a bit on, on a bit of a losing streak recently, and I kind of thought maybe I partner up with a manager like Will Hobbs, who's more like always a manager. He's more of a, a bodyguard that could work out really well. Um, and like looking at him, like I, I said before, stats are actually pretty good, especially for someone who's just hitting his thirties. He's kind of nearly he's kind of hitting his prime now. So yeah, so I, might, I might ask him if he wants to work in in Britain, and if he does. I might bring it. Plus, having an American with an American uh, heel fact or heel partnership makes a lot of sense too. Yes, but that is it for another week of Notorious Pro Wrestling. Next week, you'll be back for it this Saturday. Yeah. This Saturday in game, next Thursday in real life, it is going to be the Keeper Lit pay per view, which we really haven't discussed the card, like, but. Some of the highlight matches will be, obviously, McGregor versus Hero will be the main event, which is a big, big deal. This is McGregor's first in-ring appearance. You'll have Rich Swan and Judy Fleish have their proper tag team debut with matching gear and a new cool name uh, as well. We will have the finals of the Notorious Pro Wrestling Women's Championship Tournament between Viper and Kelly Ray, and a couple of other matches I haven't actually announced yet. I'm really curious to see how the Conor McGregor match turns out. Although Conor is very over, although he is very talented, his psychology and stuff isn't great because he doesn't wrestle. It'll be cool to see if Chris Hero can bring him up to have a good match. Obviously, like at the minute, Chris Hero is doing like 60 rated matches, which is great for us. So can he do the same with Conor McGregor, or, or will Conor McGregor's overness like make up for the fact that he's not particularly ring savvy? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it. I'm actually very interested in it to see myself what it go, what happens. Um, but that is all I look forward to next week. So thank you again for watching. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any ideas, especially around the New Japan of America rebranding, any names or ideas behind that, leave them in the comments, whether it's here, whether it's on Reddit. I have said it before, I'll say it again. I love it when you guys get involved in the creative direction of this save. And with all that said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros.